you all came here with the same goal. Um, and assuming that hasn't changed, uh, it was to figure out how to go full time on your idea. Um, and uh, you know, my feeling is, uh, from what I've seen, um, some of you will figure that out within this very short 11 week window we call SF2, um, which when you think about it is uh, four weeks less than a single college semester. Uh, but most of you will likely figure it out after you leave. Um, and uh, it might be six months, it might be nine months, it might be a year. Um, and I have no doubt that like all of you will figure it out. Um, if you don't give up on your goal, I'm not just saying that. Uh, but of course, it won't just happen by itself. Uh, it's not like this automatic process where you will, you w where you will succeed. Um, you'll have to take certain actions. Um, and uh, you know, right now, you're all just like learning a lot of things. Um, you're learning about how to focus, uh, how to ask for help, um, how to find your true fans, how to sell authentically, right? This is what we learn here. Um, and you're learning like far more than all of that, like subconsciously as you go through this process. But if I could pick only one thing that separates all of you from your goals, um, it would be this, making good decisions. So that's what we're gonna talk about. Uh, and if you haven't noticed by now, um, I'm here to help you do that. Um, and so is the rest of the team. Um, and God willing, we're just a one plus buff to your decision-making abilities while you're here. Um, but since we like you know, teaching people how to fish so they're not just reliant upon us, um, I'm going to teach you eight principles to help you make better decisions on your own. So, in the early days of building, your decisions actually don't matter that much. Um, you know, do I post my videos to Instagram or TikTok? I think everyone has had, give, you know, asked me that question at some point. Um, do I sell to businesses or consumers? Uh, seems like a very significant decision, but when you're first starting out, um, maybe it doesn't matter that much. And, uh, you know, do I spend $100 on like an influencer post? Um, the answer is usually gonna be the same. Um, it's just, just pick one. Uh, because the main thing, you know, when you're starting out is to just take action and gain momentum, not make like great decisions. Um, but, you know, the thing that does matter at any stage of what you're doing is that internal process you have to make those decisions. Um, and, uh, you know, I feel like if you agonized over any of the decision examples I just gave you, like currently, um, your decision-making process probably needs work. Um, and if you just picked a decision because you realize it didn't matter that much, um, then your process is likely pretty good. Um, and uh, this process is the thing that needs to be sharpened and honed probably over your entire life, but this is the thing that really matters. And uh, so I, you know, I thought about this for a while, and uh, I thought of like a simple way to think about it. And uh, it's kind of this three-step process. You first gather data, then you apply your judgment, and then you make a decision. So put another way, you read the menu, you see what sounds good, and then you order it. So all I wanna focus on though is the see what sounds good part because that's where the majority of your energy is probably being spent. Um, and I call that judgment. And uh, so to me, like judgment is this lens uh, we see data through to make decisions. Um, if you've ever seen me make a pour over in the kitchen, I will taste it like I'm drinking wine and then I'll be like thinking, yo, what is wrong with this? I'm judging the hell out of the coffee. And then, you know, think about how do I adjust that next time? And uh, yeah, that, that judgment is just the precursor to good decisions. Um, judgment tells you if you should hire the intern or not hire the intern. Uh, judgment tells you which track to pick for your reel that'll make people weep. Um, judgment tells you if you should say yes to DJing that 200 person event, even though you've never done it before. <laughs> um, and to illustrate the value of good judgment, do you ever wonder why some CEOs get paid millions of dollars to work less hard than you do right now? 
Um, and, uh, you know, they're paid that much for a very good reason. It's for their sound judgment, ideally, to make like good decisions on behalf of a lot of people. Same with artists. They get paid millions sometimes to simply make what they think people want. Uh, so objectively, I think good judgment is the most valuable trait in the world. All right, which brings me to my first principle. When the long term is unclear, just make good short term decisions. Um, so I'm going to follow these up with examples from all of you. Example, Declan and Derek, right? Declan and Derek building an AI study app, essentially. Um, they got off to like a very strong start, making 20, 25K, um, but they had this problem. We don't know where this company is going over the next year. So what should we do today? And you know, that's a very reasonable question. If you don't know where things are going, how do you even make like simple daily decisions? Uh, I'm curious what like all of you think. What would you say to Declan and Derek? Anyway, Adam, what would you say? Good short-term decisions. Okay, so what would you say in that case? Like, look at what you what are some of the easiest first steps you can make based on what you learned, or, and also what you want to try and do. Okay. okay. So they're from yeah. Yeah, Bronson. Maintain what you have to buy yourself time. Yeah. Cool. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Do people who are using it right now do they like it? Asking if they like it. Yeah. Yep. I mean, ask if they want to work on this for the next few weeks or something. Right. If they even have it, then they work on the next one month. Right. Okay. So, you know, went for a little walk around the pier as we do. And I kind of said, do whatever improves your numbers now. No matter what you decide later, that will only be good. So, that's just a, you know, just applying short term thinking. And that is like never going to be a bad idea. You've just continued to improve things. If you sell the business one day, your numbers will be better. Um, if you decide to, you know, just keep running it, that'll also be good. So I, you know, this is just a very simple way to, uh, to frame that problem. Let's give an example of Adam. He said the other day, should I just focus on making content or find a tech pivot and raise money? Right? So it's like a really good question. Like you could make a dramatic change right now and just totally affect like the trajectory of what you're doing. Um, and uh, you know what I said was like either way you need traction, right? Like focus on getting traction in the best way you, in the best way you know how and you can come back to that decision later. Right? So yeah, if you ever just get caught like in this, you know, you have no idea where things are going, there's always something you can do that no matter where this thing leads, it will just be helpful to you. And uh, I think Bill Space is another really good example from pretty recently. Um, you know, this, this really happened. The Dubai government is offering us millions of dollars over three years uh, to run a campus. Should we take the money? And, uh, you know, I think, I actually think most people would just say yes. That was actually something we were trying to do. It worked. And then, you know, the deal came through and, uh, you know, we decided, you know, not to do it. And there was actually a really good reason for this. It was this. It was, you know, We've pivoted an insane amount over the last three years. Uh, chances are that will continue. Best to not commit to something that, you know, is almost as long as the company has been around right now, right? So, you know, it's just like, uh, it's just interesting how like something that feels like success as well can also be like the wrong, wrong decision. And, you know, we trust Farza to make, make calls like that. All right, principle two. Um, I think this is like framed in a lot of like similar ways, like pros and cons, you know, is a very simple way to kind of, to, to say the same thing, but I'm going to, I'm going to point out like a slight difference. So quickly weigh potential upside versus downside. I'll give an example of Kat. Uh, so Kat was asking me this the other day, should I DJ this party for Brian Johnson? Does everyone know who Brian Johnson is by now? Cool. <laughs> so I'm not that good at DJing yet, and I might embarrass Build Space, which to me I kind of like 
laughed at. Like, you definitely don't need to worry. This is a very real concern for her, though, right? So, like, what, what, would, what would you say to Kat? You know, she's, she's brought up this, this concern. Um, how would you kind of approach it? Sorry to understand. So, the pro, pros and cons. So, pros probably have a lot of people get to know you. Cons, you're just a little bit embarrassed and you have like an uh, you know, embarrassing moment, an awful moment. I feel like, yeah, nobody likes to be embarrassed, but that's not as bad as the good. Like, the good is like kind of more than the bad, you know what I mean? Right. Like, if, if it goes well, then it's like very well. If it goes bad, it's like, I'll give you that. Right. Mm -hmm. I'd say like we're usually most our our own harshest critics and the things you're embarrassed about other people probably don't even think about. Yeah, right. Yeah, just agreeing with Lucas. Like if I think about the times in the past when I thought, oh, don't do this because it will be embarrassing, like every single time I was just being over I was just overthinking it. Right. Um, so you know, I like the idea of pros and cons. The only thing that you know I think is like slightly different in this um, is that pros and cons seem very concrete. Like this is the pro, this is the con. Um, you don't really know what's going to happen. So like the way I kind of think about it is like what's like best case scenario and like what's worst case scenario, and it's just more of a guess. It's just upside versus downside risk basically. Um, and so yeah, you said a lot of those same things. So upside, you know pushes her comfort zone, uh, she gets to network a bit, uh, she gets feedback on her work, and uh, you know, she gets to see if she likes DJing in person. Um, downside, potential embarrassment, right? So uh, you know, after this, what I said to her was, it's an ideal fit, trust me. Um, now, do I know it's an ideal fit? Absolutely not. But for me, I'm just doing this like, quick analysis in my head, upside versus downside, and uh, maybe she just needs like, a little bit of confidence, and it's just like, just go for it. Um, that's, so that's, that's kind of how I looked at that situation. Um, Kareem, here's another, another example. So, um, so Kareem was, uh, um, you know, he had a food truck catering business. He was doing pretty well. And, uh, you know, now he's thinking about like another business that he's, he's worked a bit on. Um, so he said, should I stop selling food truck services, which are kind of working, and pivot to selling foot traffic data, right? So like, how would you, how would you like, Approach that problem. You know, it's a big question, it's a huge decision. Yeah. Which one is more exciting? Which one is more exciting? Yep. Yeah. Um, what if like food truck services is working extremely well, but it's like, you know, it's kind of boring. Um, but selling foot traffic data is like at zero. Would you say like kind of go after what's most exciting? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Obviously, yeah. Yeah? I would just say, like, if the food truck service is going, then just keep doing that. Maybe, like, split it, like, 60, 40, until, like, there's enough scale for that. Okay, okay. Um, so, you know, upside, larger market, better margins, um, it's already validated, and you get to feel, like, excited again. Uh, downside, don't really know much about it, right? So, although it was, like, a significant decision, if you just, like, think about it, Upside versus downside, you know, I, I was just kind of like, just go for it. Um, and, you know, it's, uh, it's important to, like, challenge these things. Like, if someone has that clear decision, um, it's good to challenge yourself, challenge other people. Um, but if you just do some, like, kind of, yeah, just basic, basic just checks, you know, it actually can become, like, kind of obvious, even though it's a significant decision. Um, yeah, any, any questions on that? That one's pretty straightforward. Um, all right, so principle three. If your decision is emotional, don't pretend it's logical. Um, and so, get into some examples. So, example, many, many of you here, actually. Um, you know, I've heard this, heard this a lot. Should I keep doing what's working or try and monetize my audience, raise money, sell my business, etc.? cetera? And, uh, you know, there's one way to look at this, which is, you know, just rationalizing. And uh, I, I just, I've heard this a lot, actually, over the last week. Um, like, I need to make a bold move to progress, and now is the time. Um, reality, it might be just, the grind is boring, and I'm getting impatient. And, uh, you know, it's really important to kind of, like, check yourself to see what is the reality. Um, and, uh, you know, the main thing is just, don't pretend. 
right? Like it's very important to know why you're making a decision. And it's completely fine to make an emotional decision. No one's saying that's the wrong thing to do. Um, but the idea is you just know exactly why you're doing that thing. Um, so, you know, uh, also, if your decision to take that bold move works out, that's really great. Impatience served you. Um, if not, at least you know next time it was actually your impatience that messed you up. So just be honest, right? So regardless of how it goes, you should know why you did that thing. And, uh, you know, example is just me a lot over the years as well. Um, this is something I ask myself, I've I'll, I'll asked myself for the last like 20 years of trying to be an entrepreneur, um, should I keep pushing or just quit and do something better, right? And, uh, you know, I can rationalize it as I'm not progressing, so I have to change something. Reality is sometimes I just need a break. I just need to take two days off and then I'm actually completely fine. Um, so it's just, uh, you know, it's just kind of a learning about yourself, learning, just becoming aware of how you're making those choices. And that, that's kind of it. Um, but the main, main thing is just, just admit it's emotional um, so you can learn what's informing your choices because that's the thing that really matters. Any questions? Is there anything you can tell if which one it is? Like, if you need a break or you should, you know, it's emotional. Yeah, I think sometimes, like for me personally, I'll, uh, you know, taking a break is not, not a hard thing to do, to check. Like if I'm going to make like a very significant decision, um, I'll probably just take a little more time with it and I'll just be more skeptical of it. There was a time though when I would just do the complete opposite. I was just like, as soon as I felt that thing, I would just do that thing. Um, but I think, uh, you know, over time you just kind of learn about yourself. But, you know, when it's a significant decision, just ask, just check. Like maybe this is just something where you just need to take a break. Are you being objective? You can talk to other people about it. Sorry. Should you wait for some decision to feel natural to you or should you be time bound and like make a decision at that point in time? I think what's good to do, like depending on how significant the decision is, you would just a lot more time to that thing. Um, and uh, you know, I think the, the, the other thing is if it keeps coming up, if that decision just keeps coming up, there's probably something you need to do about it. Like it's not just, hey, I'll just take a break and then you know, I'll never feel that way again. Maybe it's like, I'll take a break and then I'll need to take another break and, take, and it just keeps coming up. Well, it's probably like a pattern and you, know, you probably need to change something at that point, you know, where the breaks don't really add up to anything. Anybody else? Question. So what about like the theme that some people say like, follow your guts, but sometimes you just feel like something is the decision to take. Really, you don't really know why. It's kind of an internal feeling. You don't take up, basically. Yeah. You think that's a good, like, good thing to do? And like, does this tend to maybe have a pattern and be like more like an emotional decision? Yeah, I just think it still like just depends on like the gravity of that decision. You know, if it's like ordering at a restaurant, you probably don't need to agonize over the decision. You can just kind of go with your gut. You're like, I just feel like that thing. Um, but if it's like something that could affect you for years or it's like quitting a job, quitting what you're doing, you should probably give it like a little more time, right? Like that, that's probably how it, I would answer it in probably the same way. Um, yeah. Does that make sense? Anybody else? Okay. Principle four. Um, when in doubt, just do the math. Example. Me here and Kieran. So if you don't know what me here and Kieran are doing, they're working on like a B2B cloud services person. Uh, pers how, how would you actually describe your thing in one line? I still can't. I still can't do it. Manage cloud using code. Right. Okay. So um, you know, in the in the last week, they uh, came up with another possible opportunity through exploring this. They they thought of another idea and they asked, "Hey, is it worth like pursuing?" That new idea and uh, you know my answer was just kind of like make a spreadsheet you know uh, enter how many people you think would want this how much they would pay um, how much it would cost to deliver that to them all how many you can realistically deliver on X time frame like you can start putting numbers to these ideas and you know even if it's like totally off 
one, it's like an exercise in like trying to be objective and like trying to approach things like mathematically. Um, and the other thing is like, hey, maybe it'll actually be useful and you can tell, is this a $50,000 idea? Is it a $10 million idea? You just don't know. Um, and so we do this all the time here. You know, we have like 100 business models we've come up with over the last year. Um, we put some numbers to them and you can just roughly see, you know, hey, should we do merch? Okay, well, we know how much merch we can sell. We know the margins, we know how many people, all this stuff, we know what it takes to deliver it, how many people, all this stuff. You can just put and just run the math on and see if it makes sense. Um, and so, you know, you can do that very quickly. Like we've done that with like 100 ideas. Um, you can do this in like five to 10 minutes. So if you're just not sure, you know, is this worth your time? Um, you, can, you can just do something like that. Has anyone ever like tried to do something like that? No one is down to math. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. Um, is anyone like wondering if their business makes sense or what they're working on makes sense? <laughs> yeah. You're wondering? <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I think like, you know, you can give these things a bit of time. Like I guess the, uh, you know, like you just don't know entirely, but it's good to have like some guess, like ideal scenario, worst case scenario, you can plot both of those out and you can just see like, you know, is this even worth attempting in this way? Or maybe it'll give you some ideas for how you should approach it. Um, and yeah, so like, you know, in the example of like merch at build space, we can run the math on that very quickly and learn like, this will probably not be a significant business model in like five to 10 minutes, right? So that can really like inform like how you spend your time in like a relatively short amount of time. Yeah, you, were you, uh, yes, okay. Does that make sense? Cool. Um, Ryan, so Ryan is building a clothing brand. Um, you know, which is, uh, I'd say, like, one of the harder businesses you can build. Um, and he said, I've made 1K net so far. How do I make 4K more this month? How would you, uh, how would you guys approach that? What would you say to Ryan here? I'd probably say, Michael? Yeah. I'd probably just be like, yeah, grab a spread, like a spreadsheet and figure out, you know, how much it costs to make your thing and how many you need to sell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. I want to like 4K. You would what? I want to approach like 4K in a month. I oh, why not? How would I, how, how I make 1K and how can I double it? Right. Um, that would make more sense rather than approaching like make it four times, which is um, very hard. Okay. <laughs> what, if he, what if he absolutely had to, you know? Yeah, maybe like look at other stream, like other streams where we can make business or make make probably a floating ground, like make more articles. Probably that. Right. Okay. Yeah. I think like uh, I think like from like how we made his first one K was just like within a few minutes, like over here. I think that's what most of us just thinking. So I would just say that I like, just do that again, like some other place, like maybe Founders Inc. or something, or like somewhere else where you can just get like 20 people, say a story in a minute, and then just sell this, do the same thing, just repeat like three times, four times. Right. So, like, yeah, repeat the thing that you feel worked. I guess, like, my question then would be, like, how do you know it if it worked? Was that good enough? Um, you know, did you, uh, was that like a like the perfect way to make $1,000, or was it like kind of like a messy way to make $1,000 and it could be better, right? Sure. Um, I think something that hasn't been mentioned is uh, the delivery aspect. Mm -hmm. um, like, how, how long did it take him to deliver one unit, right? right? And so then how many units can he actually deliver in a month and then work backwards from there? Like, yeah. Because if, if, if he can't deliver more than X number of units either, he has to figure out how to right. get to more units or he has to figure out like a different pricing track. Yeah, so, you know, kind of, I said s something similar. Um, you know, you could just do the math on that. You need to make $4,000, make $4,000, $25 per shirt, so you better sell 160 shirts. Um, or you could, uh, you know, change up the product and you can do $4,000 
at $500 per leather jacket and just sell like eight jackets in a month, right? Um, so you gotta look at, you know, a lot of things. You gotta look at your current audience size, how much you can grow that, how many people you can sell a $24 shirt to versus like a $500 jacket. Um, you know, can you, you know, what is the amount of time to make 160 shirts versus eight jackets in one month? Like there's a lot of things you have to think about. Um, but I think if you kind of attempt that exercise, it'll probably point you in the right direction. And my feeling is it's probably something like selling eight jackets in a month seems like a more realistic way to get to that goal um, versus just the amount of time it would take to do, you know, um, to do shirts. So, you know, it just helps you like also just be to, to kind of like stand back from what you're doing and just see, hey, is there another way I can do this? If I just up the price here, what does that mean? You know? Um, yeah. So it seems like uh, the time boxing is a really important part of this exercise. Um, how would you approach the time boxes? Yeah, I think you'd have to like literally look at how much time you have to spend on this. Um, how much time you have to spend on like making stuff, selling it, could you make a jacket in like five hours or does it take like 40 hours? You know, this would be like a very big question. Um, yeah, so I think that that's a good way to put it. Like you can set the, the parameters on any of these things. You can set the time, you can set the price, all this stuff and work backwards from there. And even though it's not like guaranteed, at least the math like checks out. You can get there and that's the theory, right? Okay, principle five. Deciding to do more than one thing at a time will likely result in failure. Um, I have a little caveat to this. I would say like, if you have momentum, if you have a team, maybe you can do this. But even generally here, we try and avoid these things. Um, so some examples, um, you know, I've heard, I've heard this one. I'll make music while making a film. Um, I'll focus on selling while trying to raise money. I'll make content while monetizing it. I'll build a business while I become an artist, you know? Um, and what, yeah, what would you, how, how do you, how do you guys react to, how do, how do you react to this principle in general? What's that? <laughs> no one specific. <laughs> What's like initial reaction to like, you know, someone saying this to you? Yeah, right. It's really hard. Why is it hard? It's hard to do two things at once. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Has anyone tried to do like two things at once, or is still trying to do two things at once? Okay. And why do you think that is? Maybe me here. Like, why do you why are you trying to do two things at once? Uh, and what what are those two things? Oh, uh, one's one is what. Uh, the, the cloud thing and the other thing is uh, working on coding models and, and, and it's me and Kiran both working on Kiran mostly working on it but right. we do end up splitting our attention and right. other things okay yeah Adam I think it's like hard to put your heart into two things at once okay like you could do like a mindless job kind of and then put your heart in something but it's hard to like try to do two really actively important projects at once okay so you all kind of agree that doing two things at once is actually not ideal? Um, well, that's I good. Have, <laughs> yeah. <makes> sense. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this is pretty personal, but like I, I try to like dodge between things because I personally find it boring after a while to like keep doing the same thing. Yeah. And I feel like switching between creative things also, in, like if I'm stuck on making this song, I just end up starting another project or like start like working on my film more so until I find the creative inspiration for my song and that just feels more like a natural process to me than just committing to this one idea and just trying to okay you know? yeah so you know for you like you have to do something completely different but that's still like product so what are those two things for you or like you know you're making music you know you don't have the inspiration to keep making music you know, what's the other thing you do? So there are two scenarios. One is like, I'm working on a song and I'm not finding inspiration. I start working on another song. Uh, another aspect is like, I'm working on a song. I'll instead like end up writing, uh, working on my script more for like a few days and then I'll come back to that song. And do you find like, 
the doing the scripting like helps you just make music later or is that like a break or like I guess where does the scripting go to does that like you know is that uh... it's 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 a break and it's a break when I uh, it's a break and I also don't feel unproductive about it right okay yeah. okay so and how like how is the script scripting going scripting is going decent not like it's not like I don't have the same momentum as I have with music right now. Yeah. But it's still moving at like a linear pace. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think the main thing is like, you know, the other stuff you're doing, how is that like helping the primary thing you're doing? Maybe that is just like a break, maybe it's a way to get inspiration. Like I still think that's like a focused way to work on something. So, you know, it sounds like you're doing two things at once, but maybe not. Maybe that's just how you find inspiration or get through difficult times with the other thing. Um, so, you know, my feeling is, you know, when you're faced with these two, like, very difficult challenges at once, um, I feel like you should just pick one or, uh, you know, you risk masking, like, indecisiveness. Like, you're like, should I make music or make a film? I'll just do both. Well, maybe it's just because you just can't pick one or you just lack conviction in, like, what you're doing. And so, you know, I think, like, you should just, you know, force yourself. If you had to pick one, what would you pick? And that'll at least tell you maybe, hey, this is probably the thing that really matters. Um, and so, yeah, I usually find that it's, it's going to be one of these two things. Um, yeah? What about building a startup and building an audience? Like, those are two different things, of course, related, because building an audience can help with your startup as well. Yeah. But they're two massive things, I think. But they're still important at the same time. Yeah, I think, like, you know, I see those both as like building your startup. Um, like it's still all towards like the same goal. Um, I think when it's different is just like when it's just like these significant, like very significant things. It's like, yeah, uh, you know, building, yeah, building uh, uh, your career as an artist, building a business at the same time, trying to monetize like audience uh, growth. Um, like these are just both like very large things. They're both super hard. Um, um, so yeah, you know, what I said was kind of like doing one of these things is hard enough, um, and you need like every advantage you can possibly get. Um, does that make sense? Yep. Cool. All right. All right. Principle six. Um, I think about this like maybe the most of, uh, anybody I know so far. Um, but time is a form of currency. And uh, I think you should treat it as like an investment in your decisions. Um, so for example, you can spend 60 hours of work time per week in many ways, as you know. You can spend it building, launching, selling, networking, eating, making pour overs, napping, <laughs> chatting, procrastinating, etc. There's lots of ways to break down 60 hours. And you can drill down further into any of these categories, too. Um, you can spend 30 hours building one core feature, or 50 hours, 15 hours building an extra feature, and then 15 hours like fixing bugs. Um, and uh, you know, each of these things will have outputs roughly proportional to your time investment. Um, and I just think in general, like treat time as like a precious, non-renewable resource. Um, you know, every time you decide to do something, just, yeah, Sorry. that's good, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I think, you know, before you attempt anything, if it takes a small amount of time, then sure, like it's an easier decision. If it's something like that's going to really impact what you're doing, um, you know, the time is actually very, very, very precious. Um, just like curious, like, who here like feels like they really think about like their time they spend on their, you know, every action they take. Okay, you like really analyze like, you know, is this worth two hours, three hours a day? Yeah, cool. Do you find it helps you? I find that it's doing the math. Yeah. Uh, I think that we probably haven't valued our time. Like just, just despite doing the math, I don't think we've valued our time. Um, to make good decisions around it. And so even though we do 
say, oh, hey, this might take this long, right? Um, when you decide whether or not to do something. If that estimate is inaccurate, uh, which for our recent project that we've been working on has been, um, it still feels like we're wasting time. Right. Cool. So I think that accurate estimate also I think is important. Mm. Anybody else? Yeah. It's interesting because I'm not usually like this, but in the last few weeks or months, I've gotten really busy with a bunch of things here and outside of it. And I've started to think this way a lot more, where even like 30 minutes is important to me, generally. So it's yeah. interesting that I'm not usually like it, but now that I'm busier, I'm more mindful of time. Yeah. Uh, like personally, I'm probably at like the five minutes matters. I don't know if you guys notice that in my conversations with some of you sometimes. But it's just, uh, yeah, the, the, time, the time to me is like crazy precious. Um, yeah, anybody else? Yeah, also, I think, because I've worked as a contractor before, you're like, time is equal to money, basically. Right, yeah. And I think that makes it very easy to see, like, an hour is like $100, so when you're doing nonsense, you're kind of... Yeah, 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 right, right, right. It's easier to visualize at least. Sorry. Sure, yeah, yeah, Adam. I find it's, like, also, it could be really hard, though, like, if you have a certain mind and time, like, fluctuates in its value, like, one hour can not be very useless or can be very useful, like... I find lately I have become more tight, but it's been more about energy levels than time. Mm -hmm. Like how much energy, like this half hour week will take this much energy, do I have that to spare that day? So I mm -hmm. just, my personally just been feeling more like the energy's been the thing I'm resource I'm balancing versus mm -hmm. time, but I can see time being like. Time to take a break. <laughs> yeah, I get that. Yeah. I think also like for me, uh, like the value of time is also contextual. Like one hour means a lot, but like right now, the most valuable thing I could be doing in this hour is like sitting here listening versus doing some other work. So also like time, but also in the context of like, at this moment in time, what could you be doing that is most valuable? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a, very, uh, it's a very weird concept in that way. Um, but it's almost like, how would you like to spend your time and you know how can you like maximize the way you spend your time this is something how you know something I think about. Um, okay, principle seven. Um, uh, this is something I also do like a lot. Um, I just like assign probabilities to like better weighed decisions. Um, so for example, you know you can spend forty hours a week working a job, and you'll have like hundred percent odds of making one hundred k in a year because you're paid a salary. Or you can spend 60 hours a week painting art, and maybe you have like 50% odds of making 30K in one year because painting art and selling it is just generally hard. Not to say you can't exceed that, it's just, you know, it is just tougher. Um, or you can spend 80 hours a week building an AI startup, and maybe you have like 10% odds of making $10 million in like five years. Um, you know, so, you know, when you're weighing these things, it's really important to like just think about the probability of those outcomes. Um, and this is something you kind of learn when you do sales as well. Um, so like if there's like a 10% chance of closing a 100k deal, um, you know, that's actually like 10k in forecast revenue. You have to apply the odds of that happening. Um, or there's like an 80% chance of closing a 20k deal. That's actually worth more because you have a much higher chance of closing that. And that's how you kind of look at those sales too. Um, so I don't know if anyone's like kind of doing like sales pipelines and stuff like that, but that just becomes like second nature. Um, you know, and that's a, that's a good way to do it. Like, how much is that worth? What are the chances I can close that, right? How much is the time spent in closing that? There's, you know, you can always break it down in that way to see the true value of it. Um, yeah, does anyone think in, like, probabilities in general? <laughs> like, when uh, you're making a decision? Yeah, I'm just curious. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, okay, just curious, cool. Um, so yeah, just in general, like you can't just look at potential outcomes. Um, you have to look at like the probability of those outcomes. So that's just like a simple way you can now like layer that on top. Like you have like, hey, this could go really well. What are the chances it could go really well? Or this could go really bad. What are the chances it could go really bad? Yeah? How can I uh, weigh the probability of me earning a particular amount of money by next year? I mean, all of these things are kind of made up, right? 
but it's more just to help inform like your decision making. Like you've already decided, hey, I'm going to be an artist and this is like the amount of money I could make as an artist theoretically. And I have these odds, like maybe roughly, you've done the math in some way and you've decided to do it, right? Now it's like, hey, how can I like actually increase my odds of that thing happening? What are like the actions you can take, whether that's like making more music or just like, you know, collaborating more, whatever it is. Um, you know, you can start to increase like the probability of that thing happening. Um, but in a way, you've already chosen to do that thing, right? But anyway, the, uh, the idea is more like you know what possible out outcomes there are. Just know that, you know, there's this other way, you, the other way to like improve um, how you look at those, uh, the chances of those outcomes happening. Any questions on that? Yeah, I mean, you just have, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, all these things get kind of personal. It's just, uh, you know, what's your risk tolerance? Um, do you feel like, you know, you might be able to like overcome those odds? Um, you know, uh, it, it's more like, you know, how can you be like objective about these things that are just like, uh, really like confusing to think about, very chaotic to think about, and uh, just being kind of aware of those things. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I think that I think that's a really good way to look at it. You're kind of looking at looking at it amongst other things. Right, like what are the odds of this versus that versus that versus that, um, and that just helps you just put it in put it into context, right? Yeah, Abel. How do you come up with the probability to assign? It's just kind of like I think a lot of these things are just like guesswork, right? But you know, I guess it helps you put like some kind of like put you in like some kind of frame of mind to like evaluate these things um, and just go into it with like kind of eyes wide open. And you know, if you have to make a decision. At least you have like some data point, you know, in terms of like, let's say sales, right? You can assign that probability. You know, the probability is a total guess. It's like how conversations are going, how fast are they responding to emails? Like, you know, it's just made up, right? But it just helps you just put things into perspective, I think. Yeah? One thing that helps me uh, make sense of payouts was if think of it in terms of orders of 10. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, exactly. So you can just keep it simple. Um, it is all, again, it is like made up. It's just more like, and uh, you know, I kind of mentioned this at the beginning, it's just your decision making process and just kind of trying to refine that using some kind of objective way of doing it, even if it's kind of made up. Yeah. Okay, last, last principle. You'll never know what was a good or bad decision until much later. This is just the reality. Um, you know, a good short-term result can come from a bad long-term decision, um, and a bad short-term result can come from a good long-term decision. And uh, you know, if you really think about it, I think we all know this to be true. Um, so you know, life life is complex. Um, all you can do is like aim to learn and improve as much and as fast as possible and uh, use whatever principles you've learned and uh, take your best guess. And that's it. Any, uh, any questions? Short-term mistake. It's more like something that seems to go badly in the short term um, can come from a good long-term decision. So maybe like a, a simple one that maybe you all understand is like leaving a job. Okay, well you know your pay is going to be severely affected. You just lost your source of income, but in the long run, you know that was probably a good decision. You just don't know if it was good to leave your job 
until much later. You just have no idea. Maybe that job was actually great, and the thing you did didn't work out well, you know? But then maybe three years later it goes well. You just don't know, right? Um, so, you know, I think my only point is like, you can use all these tools, use all these principles. At the end of the day, it is just guessing, but you're trying, to, trying your best to take like informed guesses. Put some, just add some order to the chaos of the guesses. And that's kind of it, that's all you can do. Yeah? How do you make, how do you decide when to chill? When to chill? <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Um, how do you decide when to chill? And how do you like cut off the noise? Wow. Hmm. I feel like these are very, like, to, for me personally, like, I separate almost like, uh, you know, working indoors from, like, being out in nature. If I'm, like, out in nature, I'm clearly, like, there's no way I can work. I'm just, like, totally disconnected from technology and business and all this stuff. Like, that's just very, for me personally. I think, well, I think segregation of space is, like, very important. Yeah. Yeah, I do the exact same thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I will work at home, but it's like not quite, not quite the same. Something that works for some people is turning off their phone. Yeah, turning off your phone. It's, it's like, yeah, get the block. <laughs> it's actually just a big ad for block. <laughs> wow. <laughs> No, 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 buy the block. <laughs> um, yeah, cat. <laughs> All right, cat. Um, I'm quite bad at this. I'm like learning to get better. Actually, Farza always tells me to like do this more, and uh, yeah, I think it's just like a habit you build. I mean, the thing for me sometimes is like, um, like I'll, I'll probably just like go off on like some tangent on my own and then I'll kind of like just check it and then know that, you know, if I get some kind of feedback here or, or whatever, I'll just, uh, you know, maybe I'll make a small adjustment. I'll like try and do something with it that like still makes sense to me where I still like, you know, still adds up to the thing that I feel is good or works. Yeah. Um, yeah, like I, like I, again, I, I, don't, I think I'm a bad example of someone who's good at this. Um, like I have to force myself to like ask for people's opinions on stuff. I do think it's good. Like that's, um, but I think like the main thing is like, it's not like how much feedback you get. It's like what you do with that. And uh, for me, it's like, I'll try and like implement some minor things or um, uh, there's a good uh, Neil Gaiman quote that uh, I, uh, I'm going to try and paraphrase, but it's basically like, uh, when people tell you something is wrong, they're almost always right. Uh, when they tell you exactly what's wrong, they're almost always wrong. And I actually love that. I think about that all the time. Um, so like, there's almost like no harm in asking for feedback. It's just more like, how much time do you want to spend on that? Um, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. Uh, anybody else? Yeah, sure. So, babe, you were saying essentially like the amount of effort that you put into considering a decision should be proportional to the impact that it would. Right? Say that again? So, like, you were saying that you should think more about decisions that will impact you more. Right. And think less about ones that will impact you less. Like at a restaurant, you shouldn't really think about it. Just go with your gut. Um, not not think more, but maybe take more time. Yeah, like give it more time. That may be not thinking about it for like days, um, but not making like an impulsive decision for something that's like significant. You know? So fall on to that then is if you make a decision with bad information and you like you're just guessing and then you do the thing and you gain some information about the thing that you're doing, should you, like, how often should you reevaluate that decision that you 
That's completely, like, uh, you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think it's just knowing, um, you know, I don't know where that principle is buried, but it's basically just, no, just being honest with yourself about why you did that thing. And if it turned out great, fantastic, you know, but you just know why you did that thing. And if it turned out to not go well, um, then still you learn from, you know, maybe I shouldn't be so impulsive in the, in the future, you know. Yeah, right. Uh, this is more of a personal question I have, but um, how do you handle your work moving forward in the next day if you get like a really poor nights of sleep? And I guess a follow up for that is like, if you have like a poor nights of sleep multiple days, how do you approach work? <laughs> <laughs> They're turning into one ones. <laughs> I mean, personally, I, I just suffer through it, and I just like try and uh, fix that as soon as possible, right? Just get back on track. You got that one away. That was like one time in the last three months. <laughs> that was <a> once. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Someone else? Yeah. At least for me, what I do, like, at least try to do, always, like, is when I'm, like, in a sort of crisis or I have, like, a decision to take and I'm, like, you know, yeah, we're, we're like, I'm in crisis mode. I don't reach out immediately to people because I know that, like, I would probably, like, over-exaggerate things and I'm not going to be able to explain well. But of course, I try to kind of try to process it myself, write about it, and that helps me to get a lot more clarity. Once I have that, I'm tiny to but then I go to someone else and ask for help. Because I think, of course, I'm not going to waste their time as much, and then they're going to be able to help me better. So it's kind of force process yourself, and then once you're more clarity, I think I do the same thing. Like, I'll probably just, like, see if I can kind of get through it on my own. But I also don't think that's, like, necessarily the right thing to do or something. You can just go immediately to someone, and that's, like, yeah. totally, totally cool, right? But, uh, yeah, great. Um, when you're like, I guess evaluating outcomes of your decision, how big of a factor do you like play on luck or like kind of like chance? Does that make sense? I mean, there's no like evaluating that. It's almost like just do the thing that's like the highest probability. And uh, you know, if luck is on your side, then great. And if it's not, well, you know, you weren't expecting it anyway. So I, I do think luck does play like a huge part in things in general. Um, but. Uh, there's like no point, like, I don't know, I don't see the, I don't see the purpose of it. I'm just saying like, if you make like a really big decision and like you get lucky one time and then you think like, oh, because I did this, I got this. Really yeah, awesome. yeah. And the next time you go make a big decision, like, oh, well, it worked the last time. But right. Yeah, I think you have to be like honest with yourself if that was lucky. Um, I don't know, I feel like personally I can tell if something just like, there was a lucky break or let's say I took something that was very high risk, unlikely to work out, yet it went well. Uh, then I'll be like, oh shit, I was just lucky. And if you're not, then you're probably just gonna lose that luck the second time you do it, and you're just gonna go back to zero, right? Um, yeah. Anything else? Anybody else? Cool, thanks so much, guys.